Welcome, everyone. I'm Bob Anderson, Interim Transition Pastor here at the Presbyterian Church of Wyoming. Believe it or not, this is our fifth Sunday to be separated from one another, and we welcome you from wherever you are right now at your homes and your living rooms, uh, and we're glad that you're a part of our viewing group, a part of our congregation in exile, if you will. Thank you for being faithful during these times of separation. Many of you have continued to mail in your contributions, your pledges. Uh, many of you, in fact, a number of new people have been using our online giving option as well. And I wanted to remind you of that. So thank you so much for being here today as we look at the scriptures uh, for the Sunday after Easter in John 20. Welcome. We might be separated physically, but in the spirit, we are gathered. Please join me for the call to worship. When we are staying at home, Christ finds us. When we can't hug our grandchildren, Christ finds us. When we are missing our friends and teachers, Christ finds us. In the middle of our fear and worry, Christ finds us. Christ comes, and with him, God's very presence. Say out loud right now, wherever you are, with a shout or a whisper, Christ is here. Let us worship God. join me as we make our common confession on behalf of all humanity. Let us pray. 
God of peace and justice, this pandemic has revealed so much that we often ignore. The cracks and disparities in our communal lives are wide, apparent, and deadly. The question is, what will we, as your Easter people, do? How will we live? We pray that starting today, right now, Easter will be a miracle that opens our eyes to both the lack of peace in the world and how we might be a vehicle for your peace, being faithful bearers of your life in our lives. And let's pause and for just a moment of silence as you make your own confession today. Friends, in God's presence is fullness of joy, the forgiveness we need, and the peace we seek. Through Christ and by the Spirit, you are forgiven and free to live as Easter people. Amen. And now, friends, we have received the peace of Christ. And let's offer that to one another. The peace of Christ be with you as it is with me. Amen. Hey, what's going on? This is Adam Hayden, the Youth Program Director here at PCW. And I want to invite all the children, all the kids to gather around the screen. So parents, if your kids have run out the room, call them in. If they ran out the house, go out and get them. If you don't know where they are, you better check into that. But just get them around the screen, have them all come up. So they can see. All right. Hey kids, hope you're doing well and enjoying yourself at home and outside in your yard. Uh, I want you guys to think about being scared. Think about the last time you were really, really scared. Because back when Jesus was alive, he had some friends, some disciples that followed him wherever he went and listened to everything he said and try to be just like him. These were his disciples. And after Jesus died, they were sad and they were very scared. They didn't know what to do. I mean, this was their leader. This was their king. This was the, the person that they were putting their faith and their life into. And now he died. So they were scared. They didn't know what was going to happen next. So they're sitting in a room scared. And then Jesus walks in and he brings them the most perfect gift that he could bring, exactly what they needed. He brought them peace. He, all gave, he gave them all the Holy Spirit, a spirit of peace. And that peace took that fear and those scary feelings and just made it okay. So the next time that you feel scared, and there's a lot of people feeling scared right now. This corona, corona pandemic, it's kind of scary. And it's okay to feel those feelings. It's okay to feel scared. But the next time you're feeling scared about anything, I want you to remember that you can always close your eyes and you can always imagine Jesus walking into the room and giving you a spirit of peace. And that spirit of peace is always with us. No matter where we go, it's always there right next to us making those scary feelings and those scary thoughts okay. So if you all can pray with me, uh, if you want to close your eyes, if that helps you focus on God, if you want to put your hands together, sometimes that helps people focus on God. And you can repeat after me, all right? Dear God, thank you for giving us a spirit of peace. Please help us receive it. Amen. Good morning, everyone. This Sunday, we're going to be looking at an Easter experience of the disciples from John chapter 20. Let me read to you their experience of uh, meeting Jesus. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the religious leaders, Jesus came and stood 
in their midst. And Jesus said to them, Peace be with you. And after Jesus said that, he showed them his hands and his side and his wounds. And, he, and the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. And again, Jesus said, Peace I give to you. As the Father has sent me, so send I you. And when he had said this, Jesus breathed on them, saying, Receive the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we look at the scripture from John chapter 20 today, we see the disciples gathered together and sheltered in place. Does that sound kind of familiar for you these days? As we all shelter in place in our homes and, and there was no coronavirus 19 hovering outside their door though, but there were legal authorities because someone had stolen Jesus' body, they thought, and the disciples were the suspects. So they hid, they prayed, they tried to finish out what Jesus had told them to wait until the Holy Spirit came. But they were in a quandary. They couldn't figure out what all of this was. Mary came back that morning saying Jesus had risen from the dead and she had talked to him and they had seen some of his grave clothes there. And yet, what was all of this? They couldn't, they searched and searched for meaning and they just weren't able to figure it out. So they hunkered down in their rented room and tried to figure out some sense about this story. And that's so much like us sometimes. A global pandemic shakes our world. That pandemic threatens our way of life, our core values. We shelter in place waiting and our prayers come forth projected it seems by our very anxiety up into the heavens. We have that unsettledness that comes from the difficult times. So we can relate to those disciples. But for the disciples, all of a sudden, in the midst of their questions, Jesus showed up. He didn't knock on the door. He didn't shout anybody home. He just was there. And they didn't know how it happened. But his presence melted their fear, melted away their anxiety, as they heard him say to them in the midst of their confusion, peace, be still, peace, be still. And all was still in that room because Jesus' presence brought that stillness and that quiet of heaven to them. Their racing hearts slowed, their tense bodies began to relax and they remembered those words, peace be with you, peace be still. We lose our peace when circumstances are uncontrollable and much of life is beyond our control right now. Our careers this month took an unexpected turn and perhaps our paychecks did too. Aging parents are alone in nursing homes or maybe a spouse and you can't go to visit them. Susan and I met an elderly neighbor of ours who braved a trip to Kroger's without, without a mask or a glove. And she said to Susan, I was lonely. I just had to get out and be with people. A family member may die of illness. We can't be with the family. A young couple struggles uh, with an office in the den and homeschooling their children at the same time, trying to keep track of bills with a reduced income. All of this surrounds us right now, and we need more than ever to hear Jesus' words, I give you my peace. Peace be with you. When these things, big or small, begin to crash down on us, we need to remember that though evil's ploy is to break down God's people and prevent God from getting God's work done, nothing can win that battle but God. 
God's people and God's work in the world is never, ever out of God's control. So we hear what Jesus said to the disciples, and he says it to us right now. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Earlier in John's Gospel, in chapter 14, Jesus said to the disciples, I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. I need to hear that today. Peace of mind and heart. I know you do too. Don't be troubled or afraid, Jesus said. So God has promised us, with an eternal promise, this peace that can come to us and be a part of our hearts today. That Old Testament word for peace is a word shalom, and it means more than just the absence of conflict or trouble. It actually means completeness, wholeness. It's like a life jigsaw puzzle coming together that has no missing pieces, and how good it feels when God begins to put our life together. And so our call to action today as we think of John chapter 20, is to open our hearts, our thinking, our mind, our ears to those words of Jesus and ask him to bring us that peace. And as Jesus did it, he connected the Holy Spirit with that peace. Receive the Holy Spirit. So I want you to take a deep breath right now. And then exhale. And then as you breathe back in, receive the Holy Spirit. And hear Jesus' words. Peace be with you. Amen. A certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Give me the goods that falleth to me. And he divided to them his living. And the younger son gathered together and journeyed to a far off country and wasted his substance in riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a famine in that land, and he began to be in want, and no man gave unto When he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare, while I perish with hunger? Father, I have seen.
as one of thy hired servants. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father, who saw him and had compassion, and ran and said, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him, and shoes on his feet. Bring forth the best robe and put it on him, and a ring on his hand. For this my son was dead, but is alive again. My son was lost, but he is found. Brother Roger of Taze wrote, Jesus, light of our hearts, since your resurrection, you always come to us. At whatever point we may be, you are always waiting for us. And you tell us, come to me. You are overburdened and you will find relief. Christ is here. Let us pray. Living God, today at whatever point we may be, we can always be thankful. This morning, we can be thankful for this virtual gathering with each other and our in-person gathering with you. We are thankful for signs of life and hope in the beauty of spring, in the new ways we have found to connect in the stories of the loveliness and strength of the human spirit, in statistics that say the curve of this pandemic is flattening. Living God, no door and no heart is locked to you. We pray for those people and places who need you, and we ask you to enter in and breathe your peace. For those workers deemed essential and who live in fear, breathe peace. For our political leaders who need wisdom, compassion, and boldness, breathe peace. For the angry whose passion can be a powerful and transformational tool, breathe peace. For the grieving in need of comfort, breathe peace. For the economically vulnerable in need of security, breathe peace. For the sick in need of healing, breathe peace. We pray for these from our community, asking that you be present to them at whatever point they may be. This morning, we especially lift up Lisa Bernheisel and her family. And we pray for Norm and Marilyn Thomas, who are grieving the death of their son and who are separated. We pray for Norm as he recovers from surgery. And we pray for Marilyn as she is at home waiting. Death, pain, suffering, this is not the last word. God's word is life. Trusting in that, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts 
as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we prepare to part our ways, remember that we are not being separate, but that we are bound by the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus as the body of Christ. Lord God, we give you grateful thanks and praise for your love for us, for joining us together as your children, as those who are growing in you, and we thank you. Thank you for your peace. And now, as God's people, go out into the world with the peace of God. Go out into the world being filled with the Holy Spirit. Go out into the world with thanksgiving and praise and trust in God. Amen. <laughs>